Good morning, all. Come on in, everybody. How we doing? Marge, Stephen Dot, Belinda, Anime. <laughs> Anime in your unquenchable enthusiasm. Happy Tuesday. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Hey, what's up, Dave? I got Billy in here this morning as well. Good stuff. What's going on, y'all? Walked outside a little more like spring today, which is a good thing. There we go. All right, Georgia, how you feeling? Got Luann, got Connie. Good bunch today. Good to see everybody this morning. And thanks again, as always, for joining in on daily prayer. Jeez, been at this a while. So, I'm um, I'm feeling a little meh this morning. Got up and realized that a just yeah, not a not not a great start to the morning. We'll just leave it at that. And so. So I'm going to breathe my way through prayer this morning. I'm grateful that you all are here to help me do that. Um, we're all right. Everything's good. Just ah, just kind of feeling meh about, about the whole thing, about, about the start of this day. But uh, but one of the things I can, I'd like to invite you to keep in prayer is, I guess, technically. I mean, I've had a meeting or two here, but today we're, I know at least I'm going to end up doing the first in-person thing we've done with our kids in a while. Um and so this evening, um, any any kids and adults that want to come by, um, we're going to be starting seeds for the garden. Um, I'm really, really excited about doing that. So the kids are going to be out in the pavilion at 5 o'clock this evening. Um, and you can hold that in prayer. I'm just looking forward to getting some hands in the dirt with them, um, getting some seeds started. Uh, went downstairs, got everything ready to go. Everything's nice and clean and, and set. And This is my favorite part of the garden season because it's the one day of the year where in in all the garden stuff is clean. Like as, as soon as you start working it, every, dirt goes everywhere and it get, it goes crazy. But uh, but I'm excited about getting started and hoping we have ho hoping we have a couple of folks stop by today, kids and uh, kids and kids at heart. So hold them in your prayers. Just that uh, that you know it'd be good for them to get out, do a little work, stretch your muscles a little bit in the garden back here, and hopefully and looking forward hopefully to uh, to an excellent garden season over here. And so, it is Tuesday of Holy Week, which means we are on page 210 in the book entitled Common Prayer. Um, and whenever you are joining in with us, if you're live, if you're coming in later, whenever you're joining, we're just thankful that you are doing so. And so, without further ado, I'm going to invite us into a moment of silence as we ready ourselves to pray. together we pray, saying, O Lord, let my soul rise up to meet you as the day rises to meet the sun. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee. Let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker. And we begin our prayers with our colleagues for the week of March 28th, saying, Holy God, you have fed us all out of your own generous and gracious hands. In the midst of these 40 days, we have received welcome, nourishment, hope, and consolation. May these things grow in us, alongside the gifts of faith, so that we may plant their seeds in the world around us. Through the Holy Spirit, guide us in the week ahead to remember our place 
in your great and ongoing story of resurrection, redemption, and restoration, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we turn to our antiphon, one that speaks to me um, so very powerfully. Save us, Lord, but not us alone. Redeem your whole creation. And we hold this desire in mind as together we pray Psalm 71, verses 1 through 3 and 9 through 12. In you, O Lord, have I taken refuge. Let me never be ashamed. In your righteousness, deliver me and set me free. Incline your ear to me and save me. Be my strong rock, a castle to keep me safe. You are my crag and my stronghold. Do not cast me off in my old age. Forsake me not when my strength fails. For my enemies are talking against me, and those who lie in wait for my life take counsel together. They say, God has forsaken him. Go after him and seize him, because there is none who will save. O oh God, be not far from me. Come quickly to help me, O oh my God. In our antiphon. Save us, Lord, but not us alone. Redeem your whole creation. For our readings this morning, we turn again to the book of Isaiah, and it appears that we will continue to be reading um, selections from what are known as the servant songs in Isaiah. And today we'll read Isaiah chapter 49, verses 1 through 6. Listen to me, O coastlands. Pay attention, you peoples from far away. The Lord called me before I was born. While I was in my mother's womb, he named me. He made my mouth like a sharp sword. In the shadow of his hand, he hid me. He made me a polished arrow. In his quiver he hid me away. And he said to me, You are my servant, Israel, in whom I will be glorified. But I said, I have labored in vain. I have spent my strength for nothing in vanity. Yet surely my cause is with the Lord, and my reward with my God. And now the Lord says, Who formed me in the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob back to him, and that Israel might be gathered to him. For I am honored in the sight of the Lord, and my God has become my strength. He says, It is too light a thing that you should be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the survivors of Israel. I will give you as a light to the nations, that my salvation may reach to the end of the earth. This is the word of the Lord. This is um, this is an extraordinary text coming out of Israel, and it's a it's a call to the church because it begins by saying, you know, the Lord God fashions this um, 
this um this person who is going to be you know like, like he, he describes it as an arrow he's going to be this arrow sort of this i don't like to use too much military imagery but you know this silver bullet like it's going to fix it like i've i'm going to send this person and they are going to make israel right again they're going to make these chosen people right again you know and he develops this and builds it up and wow everything things going to be right for the people of god so on and so forth then we get to the end of it. It says, it's actually too light a thing that you just do that. That's actually not good enough for you. And it ends, I will give you as a light to the nations that my salvation reach to the end of the earth. It's as if God looks upon his son and says, if we only save the in crowd, we've failed. And this is where our antiphon comes back in. Redeem your whole creation, Lord. That is what God has in mind. And that's an extraordinary thing from a people who are like, this is our God, from an exiled people who are surrounded by people that don't like them. And they actually get to a place where like, you know what? God's going to save the whole thing. God's going to save us all. And so as we read our own scriptures, perhaps that is um, an important consideration for us that we so often read it as, God is going to save us, these, this sort of, this group of people, this church. It's too small a thing. And our second reading comes from the Gospel according to St. Mark, chapter 11, verses 15 through 19. And here we continue to read the story of Jesus' week in Jerusalem leading up to the cross. Then they came to Jerusalem, and he entered the temple and began to drive out to those who were selling and those who were buying in the temple. And he overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those who sold doves. And he would not allow anyone to carry anything through the temple. He was teaching and saying, Is it not written, My house shall be called a house of prayer for all the nations? But you have made it a den of robbers. And when the chief priests and the scribes heard it, they kept looking for a way to kill him. For they were afraid of him, because the whole crowd was spellbound by his teaching. And when evening came, Jesus and his disciples went out of the city. This is the Gospel of the Lord. And for many of us, it's the gospel of the Lord that we wish weren't gospel because it breaks the it breaks the blonde haired, blue eyed, super duper gentle Jesus, it breaks that image right down, and reminds us of Jesus' passion and zealotry for all people, and that when people are being taken advantage of, when people are being oppressed. When people are being manipulated to the benefit of others, Jesus has no time for that. It's still, I've preached this text so many times, and it still bothers me that this is, the, this is Jesus. But this is Jesus, and it's one of the most challenging passages for me. And what it calls me to be, it's one of the most challenging passages in all the Bible. And coming back to our antiphon, perhaps we hear these words differently. Save us, Lord, but not us alone. Redeem your whole creation. For our reflection, we hear the words today of the 14th century anchorite Julian of Norwich, who wrote these words. I often wondered why, through the great prescient wisdom of God, the beginning of sin was not prevented. For then it seemed to me that that would have been well. I mourned and I sorrowed on this account, unreasonably, lacking discretion. But Jesus answered me with these words and said, Sin is necessary, but all will be well, and all will be well, and every kind of thing will be well.
it is fun and well it's a it's an interesting mental exercise <laughs> perhaps it's fun maybe it's not but if we push our spiritual imaginations to the point where it's like even sin is part of the plan it's that it, it we want to be obviously want to be careful with that but even the brokenness of the world does not escape the plans of God sin is not so powerful as if it were some unique entry into the into the system that we call creation no 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 God knew exactly what was up and so friends we turn to our prayer list and I have two additions for today. Um, the first I meant to add earlier uh, in the week, and it never came through, and so I forgot I was not reminded of it. Um, but I've been asked to pray um, for Trudy Biden and also for Vivian Sipe. Um, I had a chance to talk uh, to Doug Sipe yesterday, and I've been texting with him on and off throughout the weekend. Um, Vivian has been put into hospice care, um, but not in the um, anything is imminent kind of thing, just a little additional care. Um, but she's she's wrestling through some things, feeling feeling pretty weak, but is doing better. Um, just a lot of health concerns. And certainly for Trudy, as she cares uh, for Vivian, as the whole family does, um, we certainly pray to the Lord on their behalf. And so please hold Trudy and Vivian in your prayers. And then also received a phone call last night, uh, excuse me, from Nancy Householder. That, um, that her mother, uh, Jane Hodgson, passed away yesterday. Um, she had had a, a pile of health concerns, but, uh, but nobody had quite expected her to pass away. Um, yeah, and so it's, um, so it's equal parts, not a shock and a shock all at the same time. And so please hold Nancy and the entire family in your prayers as they mourn Jane's passing. And so let us pray for these and for the rest of our friends. our Lord and our God. Lord, at least for me, and I don't mean to pray for everyone, but it often seems that the biggest problem we have in faith is not that we don't understand morality or that we don't understand what we're called to do in this world. It's that our imagination's not big enough. Lord, you're always doing significantly more than ever than all we could think or imagine. And a life of faith and a life of growth is about allowing that ima imagination to expand day by day. To see your work expanding and including the flowers in the ground and the birds that are emerging. To see your work expanding to include people that always would have been excluded to see your work expanding, to create a world that we never could have imagined, ways of being, ways based upon faith, hope, and love. Lord, every time we take that step of imagination, we get out on the fringes and we realize, oh yeah, we're all good here. We haven't walked outside the love of God. And so Lord, thank you. Thank you that the circles you draw are always getting bigger or it's written into the very universe itself. Even the universe itself is getting bigger all the time. So is your love. And Lord, it always includes us. And it always includes our neighbor. So Lord, help us to help our spiritual imaginations to grow. To see bigger and more beautiful things than we saw yesterday. And may that give us faith to walk this journey. This journey which is intensified and brought to great clarity in this week. And so, Lord, let us walk as people of wonder, people of mystery, people of imagination. And so we hold this mystery knowing that you are present even in suffering. And Lord, though, if we could, we would wave a wand and have all suffering go away. And yet we know that you are present in some way. And so even though we can't see it, we pray for our loved ones, knowing that you are with them. And so Lord, we pray especially today for our friends Trudy Biden and Vivian Sipe, 
And Lord, we hold them close as they battle health concerns, as they walk together as a family through Vivian's health concerns. Lord, we simply hold them, hold them close and ask, O oh Lord, that you would be with them minute by minute. In the same way, Lord, we mourn with Nancy Householder and the loss of her mother, Jane. Lord, we say goodbye to a good woman. And we thank you for a long and fruitful life. And we ask that you would receive her into your arms. We also ask, O oh God, that you would comfort Nancy and her family in the days ahead as they yet again deal with loss. In the spirit, O oh God, we also lift up Amber Ash, Savannah, and Chris Price. We pray for Linda Remmers Hall, for Diane, Heather Kinnaman, Gloria Wright, Judith Kuhn, for Ellen, John Cunningham, Carolyn Yost, Steve Yelton, Kitsy Krabs, Amy and Jake Wolf and their daughter Evelyn, for Nathan Goodpastor, Nicole Jordan and her baby, Sandy Lloyd, Perry Lyons, Burt Remmers, Joanne Buell, Rob Rickle, Darlene Hayes, Butch McCotter, Bob Scott, Bruce Ludlow, Richard Lindsay, Laurie Posey, Marsha Brown, an unspoken request for Caitlin, Jennifer Ramsey, Terry Shavius, Joe Zentgraf, Steve Moorhead, Richard and Deborah Hahn, an unspoken request, Margie Snyder, David Miller, Gene Snyder, Baby Lacey, an unspoken request, Cart Denner, Karen Anderson, Sandy Suit, Alan Showalter, Jeremy Dutterer, Ann Wilson, Brian Cunningham, Tom Cross, and Dave Cunningham. We offer up our prayers for these requests, which we say out loud. Hear also the prayers that we hold in silence. As we follow in the way of Jesus, so we also also follow in his words, as together we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Savior of the world, save us from our sin, our sadness, and our self-deception. Give us courage to live in a world we cannot fix with hope that it has already been redeemed. Amen. And now may the peace of the Lord Christ go with you wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness, protect you through the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again into our doors. Amen. Amen indeed, y'all. Thanks so much for joining in. Forgive me for being a little preachy this morning, but uh, this passages were speaking to me. Um, Unfortunately, though, it's only a one-way street on this thing, and I do apologize from that from time to time. Wanted to give you a heads up um, that I'm hoping to take a little bit of a breather next week. I won't be taking time off, but I might want to be taking a little bit of a break um, from daily prayer. And so I'm just reaching out and seeing if there's anyone who wouldn't uh, mind uh, leading this, either via live or recording. Um, I can help you in either way. Um, but just with the weekend that we've got coming up, um, and be helpful to just be able to step back and to rest for a little bit from all of this. And so just putting out the word, if there's any of you that have thought about uh, stepping in and trying it, um, you know, now's a good time to do it. Trust me. Um, and it's it's not that hard. And I'm happy to do everything I can to make it make it go as easily as possible for you. And so if that's of interest to you, holler at me some point sometime. We'll we'll chit chat about it. 
But friends, whatever your day looks like, I pray that it is a blessing to you. And if you need to need to know a blessing is happening, again, you can join us at 5 o'clock if you'd like to do some seeds or at least take some comfort in that there are at least some kids here in Silver Run that are hanging out, socially distanced and masked, um, who are doing good work uh, in the world. Um, and so hopefully that gives you a little encouragement for the day. So friends, whatever your day looks like, I pray that you find God there. Until we're together again, peace and good.